News about Ukraine's counteroffensive in Kherson direction made the Ukrainian front the primary subject of the discussions again. Of course, there are many questions. How quickly can Ukraine regain control of the city? Will Russia retreat as it was before or will it fight for every stone? Should we hope for a turning point in the war and what it takes? I'm Alexey Matsuka and let's figure it out. Surprisingly, while information from the Ukrainian side is now quite restrained, Russians in their public posts are close to pan panic. Their military correspondents say that the armed forces of Ukraine are advancing from all sides and using aviation. The pro-Russian leaders turn out to Moscow requesting immediate evacuation, which at the same time should not look like an escape. They want to withdraw away from the battlefield without creating panic. And Putin suddenly returned to the idea that Crimea needs water. So now Russia has no intentions to seize Ukraine, right? In the eight months of the war, the offensive can no longer be separated from information attack. The balance of power on the world stage and the general picture of the hostilities. Everything is closely related here, so let's see first things first. The Financial Times was the first to report that Ukraine could quickly liberate the Kherson region. The media cited some unnamed sources in the US military. The source even named the date October the 20th. If you read that article more carefully, it becomes clear that it says about the right back part of Kherson region, not about Kherson itself. But what's the point of encircling the city? City, if not aiming to take it. For Kyiv, this is a significant step, not only from a military point of view. If the city which Moscow solemnly declared to be Russia territory returns back to Ukraine, this will be a huge moral blow for the Kremlin. And it will be a strong signal for the Western allies all the weapons were used for a good reason. In October, we did not have any breaking news, everything went smoothly. But Yaroslav Yanushevich, the Kherson governor, calculated that almost three dozen settlements were liberated in less than a month. Ukrainian military a show that the area of the liberated territories in the Kherson region has increased to 500 square kilometers. At the same time, the Russian side recognized that partial retreat of its troops. Russian Defense Ministry didn't declare it openly, but indicated it on the map. They still hope that the Ukrainian counteroffensive can be stopped. After all, new generals have been appoint appointed. I mean Surovikin and Teplinsky. So now troops in the south are in their command. Fresh faces are usually expected to show new results and carry favor. In addition, the offensive of the Ukrainian troops is no longer sudden as it was in the Kharkiv region. This time, Russians were preparing for it, pulling up the reserves. It's not a secret that there is almost no optimism in the forecast for the Kremlin. The Moscow-appointed leadership of the region is asking for the evacuation of the residents to Russia, calling it a rest and study trip. It was decided to organize the possibility of the departure of Kherson families to other regions of the Russian Federation for recreation and study. This primarily applies to the inhabitants of the right bank. We suggest all residents of the Kherson region, those who are willing to protect themselves from the consequences of the missile strikes, move to other territories. First of all, to the territory of the neighbor Crimea, Rostov, Krasnodar or Stavropol regions. Leave away and take away your children too. Vladimir Saldo, Kremlin appointing Kherson leader. 
Formally, they don't use the word evacuation, but it's not a matter of terms. Since there are talks about the leaving, according to unofficial information, the Kherson officials have already taken the first op opportunity to take away their families, it might indicate possible surrender of the territory, or might mean urban combat in Kherson, which is always accompanied by civilian casualties. What are the st strategic objectives of Kyiv and Moscow today? Military experts assure classic tactics could not be avoided. Ukraine needs the city of Kherson itself. After all, this will eliminate the threat to Mykolaiv and Odessa, the strategic Black Sea ports. If they're successful, Ukraine will move further along the Kherson region and part of the Zaporizhia region, assessing the isthmus of Perikop and Chongar. Thus, Ukraine will avoid direct confrontations and if possible urban battles. But for Russia, the southern direction is now much more important than any other. Moscow still has access to the Azov and Black Sea and a land corridor to the Crimea. Surrounding the Kherson region after holding referendums, there can cause the collapse of the core strategy when the since 2014 Moscow has been trying to take a bite out Ukraine saying that the oppressed Russians or Russian speakers can ask Russia for protection. After all this who will believe the high profile slogans, we always look after our own. Russian announced mobilization to hold their front line, but this step was reckless and belated. The Russians didn't have time to relocate the prepared reserve troops and transfer completely untrained soldiers in order to stop Ukraine's advance at any cost. That's why experts call the counteroffensive in the Kherson direction a new stage in the war. Battle for the city may become a turning point. From a military point of view, this is a very difficult and painful stage uh, of the war, both for Ukraine and for Russia. Heavy losses are expected. Medusa Russian opposition media, citing high-ranking officials, wrote about some new plans of the Russian authorities. Apparently, they want to conclude an agreement on a temporary ceasefire, and allegedly, the Russian and Ukrainian military could agree on this. The Kremlin may decide to withdraw its troops from some parts of the Kherson region. Now, keeping Kherson is not an easy job, and the withdrawal of troops from the region can be done as a gesture of goodwill and a step towards Ukraine, one of Medusa's interlocutors close to the Kremlin assured. Medusa Daily Newsletter. But Ukraine perceives it as Russia's trap. Putin will try to use the ceasefire to restore his army, train the mobilized men and replenish resources in order to launch a new offensive under any pretext. For Ukraine, it's more beneficial to put the squeeze on the weakened Russian grouping in the Kherson region and gain a full hold there. Russia, on the contrary, needs to gain time until spring. In this regard, Putin's speech in Astana is worth mentioning. He said Crimea suffered from water sh shortage, therefore a land corridor was needed. So allegedly they did not set a goal to destroy Ukraine. Look at Crimea. Two and a half million people live there. They captured it and cut off the water. Our troops had to go in and turn the water on. That's just an example of the logic of our actions. If they hadn't acted, we wouldn't have reacted. Vladimir Putin, President of the Russian Federation. Still another version is voiced. Perhaps this is careful preparation for the people for the truce plan. Voluntarily leave the part of the Kherson region, but preserve a land corridor. Based on the predominant moods of the Ukrainian leadership, Kyiv will not agree to this. Perhaps we will see another gesture of goodwill. 
Will Russia volunteer leave the right back bank of the Kherson region in order to clean to the left one with all its might? Then for the ordinary Russians it might look like Kyiv has returned its territories but without the defeat the Russian army of the battlefield which is so painful for the Kremlin. Moreover, the statement that we need resources mean that all the goals of Russian special military operation have disappeared. The goal of the special military operation, so called, is to deprive Ukraine of resources just as Russia used to do with all the post-Soviet countries. When Russia needs a military base in the Black Sea, it captures Crimea. When Crimea needs water, Russia takes the Kherson region. If Kremlin needs a land corridor, it takes Ukraine, Zaporizhia, Donetsk and Lugansk. If it needs power, it captures Zaporizhia nuclear power plant. In other words, for Russia, the internal borders of the former Soviet Union are rather conventional. Maybe that is why the president of Tajikistan has reminded Putin that the times of the Soviet Union are over and it necessary to respect the interest of the other states. While the president of Belarus, who agreed to become Putin's close ally, doesn't know how to get out of this trap now. It's also important to understand the timing. The armed forces of Ukraine say that in order to avoid huge losses and destruction of infrastructure, control will be regained gradually. After all, Russian's military warehouses, logistics and command posts are targeted almost every day. This tactic is aimed at avoiding head-to-head -head battles. The former intelligence chief of the Finnish general staff has quite accurately describe the possibility strategy in the Kherson region. I have already learned that when it comes to Ukrainians there is nothing impossible. They are quite experienced and know how to take the advantage of any situation. If the Ukrainians find a gap, they will use it. Major General Pekka Tovari, former intelligence chief of the Finnish general staff. Will the Russian army fight or retreat? Another important factor is that this part of the front is defended by Russia newly mobilized troops. This suggests that Moscow still plans to resist. But on the other hand, the Kremlin has not concentrated its elite units near Kherson. Well, the chances that the Russian army can retreat are increasing, but the opinion that Russia will continue to fight cannot be cast out aside. It will be a war of attrition then. Russians can do it to drag out time. In addition, they rely on winter cold and power outages. They have intensified the attacks on Ukraine's energy infrastructure, while Western air defense systems have not been obtained yet. After all, when using drones, they try to exhaust both Ukraine and the West financially. The cost of a drone and the cost of a missile for downing it are just disproportionate. But these are the new challenges, this is a new stage. Battle for Kherson seems to be the last episode of not a hybrid but a traditional war. When everything is decided not in the high offices but on the battlefield by the military themselves. When the result depends not only on the equipment but also on the desire to fight. What would happen? We will discuss it in our new episodes on UATV channel. Thank you for watching. See you next video.